So this is a, a very particular kind of uh, video. I spent um, two days, more or less, um, with Dave Fitch uh, on Twitter as at Fitchist. Um, really great guy, um, bivocational pastor and theologian, uh, Church on the Vine in Chicago, uh, as well as Northern Seminary, and uh, an incredibly likable dude. Uh, here at Northeastern Seminary in Rochester, and he was lecturing on um, broadly. I think the topic was the kind of the future of the church, which is a very large thing. That's the kind of thing seminaries like to call events to get people to come. Um, but it primarily came out of content from his most recent book, uh, "The End of Evangelicalism?" Question uh, mark, which I did a review for, and you can see that uh, review uh, here. Um, but we got uh, into a conversation, uh, Dave and I, um, regarding some of his methodology. And uh, in a Q&A at the end of the first session, I asked a question and um, I didn't feel like it was adequately addressed. Uh, he didn't really either. He said, well, I got to think about it. Uh, I then got a tweet later that night, which might have been construed as an answer. I don't know. Um, my hope for all of this is that we're hoping to, that I'm gonna that we're clarifying some of the issues at hand here. I think that by and large his project is really great and has a lot of utility. I just am hoping that maybe some further precision with language might help our thinking because it, I, I believe the way it's phrased right now is problematic. Um, so this is really a video just for Dave Fitch more or less. Uh, but in the event the others are interested in this kind of paradigm. Uh, checking out my other review of his book, The End of Evangelicalism, and picking up that book, which is a great read, um, might be useful if this is confusing. So, uh, the basic gist uh, is that the problem uh, is, is what he calls uh, an empty politic. And he's coming at this phrase um, via Lacan through Zizek. Um, Slavo Zizek. And essentially, the critique, the way that uh, Fitch uses it, is that, uh, let's say, he uses this example, uh, you're, you're for the inerrant Bible uh, as evangelicals, um, and so you're against all the people kind of who are not for the inerrant Bible. And so what ends up happening is this kind of energetic swirl around this topic, the, the inerrant Bible. The problem, he says, is that no one has ever seen an inerrant Bible or even knows what one really is. The category is hollow. That is, it's an empty politic. And as a result, you're not really for it. You're just against things that are not it. So you swirl around a center that is empty. And he says, you know, that's why you can get guys like um, Falwell and... Uh, Benny Hinn, and any number of other folks who are for the inerrant Bible. So here's all these people down here that say what they're for is this, but, but none of them actually agree on what the inerrant Bible means. Right? That's one of the ways, he says, you know it's, that it's a master signifier. And the master signifier um, is another way of saying kind of a trick to make you think that there's something there when really it's just an empty politic. Um, and he says, conversely, uh, what we want uh, as Christians, uh, potentially kind of liberated, uh, faithful Christians, is an uh, abundance politic. And uh, then at the center, there would be something that's actually uh, real and full and not hollow. And uh, it would actually ch move you in the direction of some actual change. And uh, during the course of our exchange, uh, both during the conference and then in his tweet, uh, what he suggested is that the Eucharist, and so Christ at the center, uh, is, is something that would be an abundant politic. So, for example, we'll put, um, we'll put the Eucharist here. Um, and the Eucharist, of course, uh, is a stand-in to some degree for experiencing the incarnation of Christ. And the idea for uh, David, as I understand it, is that rather than swirling you around a hollow core, the, the Eucharist 
um, by virtue of its fullness and abundance in Christ, draws you in and then back out changed, right? So that this ends up kind of functioning rather than a swirl around a center, it ends up kind of functioning as a vortex through the center, which is Christ. So the participation in the Eucharist in a very full way, not just the taking of, of bread, but the, a full experience and communion with Christ is something that actually changes your habits in the world. You don't swirl through an empty center that you never agree on. You all agree on the center. You say, yes, it's the Eucharist, yes, it's Christ. And then um, there are very particular ways in which the kingdom breaks in as a result of kind of going through this experience with Christ. Um, so it could be uh, being with the poor, um, kind of finding compassion for your neighbor, et cetera, et cetera. And he says that um, as opposed to an empty politic at the heart of which is a master signifier, which is just kind of an illusion for something when it's really nothing there. For example, he says the inerrant Bible, which everyone will kind of agree that they're for, I'm for the inerrant Bible, but it doesn't really mean anything. And you just end up construing your politics and your social interactions in opposition to people who are against the thing you're for when you don't even really know what that thing you're for is. Uh, this abundant politic um, with Christ at the center, or the Eucharist as a stand-in for Christ at the center, draws people into the center of it and uh, forms their lives in certain predictable ways such that there's an inbreaking of the kingdom and the resulting way of living is different. And he says, this is one of the reasons you know it's an abundant politic and that the Eucharist and uh, Christ is not a master signifier but is actually a real full thing at the center. Um, and that's because... Uh, ways of life are changed and actually ways of being in the world are different as a result of this encounter. That's the setup. Here's why I think it's problematic. Um, I think we're very much engaging in a similar kind of conversation that could be flipped on its head uh, for the near uh, biblicists. So just imagine this argument, right? You, you crazy liberal, Dave Fitch, um, you're making all this stuff up. Look, this is what you say is happening with the empty politic and the inerrant Bible. Well, of course you'd think that because you're opposed to the inerrant Bible. Look, here's the deal. The word, the inerrant Bible is at the center. And of course I encounter it. And I encounter it as word and the word that was made flesh. And this is the word of God and it guides my life. I encounter it, and I act in the world in certain ways. For example, I happen to know that the Bible says that it's an abomination for a man to lay with another man. So I am not going to abide by that while it happens. And when I see it happening in the world, or I see two men who say they want to get married, or these people who say they want to love one another, I say that's a sin in the eyes of God. And I am saying that. I am acting that way, and it's hard, trust me. Uh, it's hard to say. Not everyone wants the Bible these days. These crazy liberals out there are, are pushing for uh, the, you know, the biblical uh, uh, end and the gay agenda. So I have to stand my ground as a man of the word and say, this is a sinful thing that shouldn't be happening. Likewise with abortion. Likewise with whatever. All of the, these things, they're making me act in ways. And trust me, I don't like acting these ways. It does not make me a popular person, but you've got to stand by the word. I come through the inerrant Bible, I see the Word of God, and I realize and understand that I have to act and be in the world in a certain way as a result of it. Now, obviously that's not my argument, but I think you see the problem here. Like, I think that that argument from my imagined inerrant Biblicist character, that in fact the way that you say that the inerrant Bible functions as a master signifier and therefore creates an empty politic is just a matter of hermeneutics and your perspective. And they could easily say that they do live in the world in ways that are specific and consistent as a result of their beliefs. Now, it's just that we don't, and I'll identify kind of yourself and myself as part of uh, the radical middle, uh, we don't necessarily think that their responses 
uh, are in Breakings of the Kingdom. But the only thing that we have to say is, well, we know an in Breaking of the Kingdom when it hits you. So again, the category of whether the thing at the center is full or a master signifier and, and therefore empty, how you determine that is still up in the air for me. And methodologically, if you're going to continue down this route, which, which I, I don't know if, if, if it's beneficial, um, uh, I, I think that you may want to go down the road instead of saying, look, the master signifier is a useful tool for um, diagnosis, uh, diagnosis and kind of theologians function as, uh, or, and pastors function as um, diagnosticians. But I think that going the other way, which is say explaining how it is that Christ serves as the abundant politic and isn't an empty signifier, um, is dangerous. It ends up kind of positing uh, kind of a, a propositional a, a account using a methodology which at its core claims that there can be no center. All centers are hollow and master signifiers. I mean, Zizek is clear on that, Lacan is clear on that, and you're trying to appropriate this methodology um, and say, yes, but for us as Christians, it can be full and abundant at the center. Uh, I think it's problematic because the method uh, is so tightly constructed to suggest that there's nothing ever at the center that I, I'm not clear that it can serve us. Uh, because you could use the same arguments you had for what an abundant politic looks like flipped around uh, to what you had previously called a massive signifier, and I think that they make a, you know, my character there can make an argument for it. Um, I don't know if this is useful. Uh, it's just the kind of the fleshed out version of what I was thinking when we were talking. And um, I guess I'd be curious to see uh, or hear what you think. And if anyone else out there uh, read the book or, or was at the lecture and was is trying to um, kind of follow along this, I'd be interested in hearing. Uh, for the rest of you who ended up watching all the way through the video and, and weren't there, um, please, if you have any questions or this isn't clear and you care enough to ask, please shoot me some comments. Uh, Thanks.